Brad Myers here with some football news and more. Hi. Football season. I love it, Hudson. There hasn't been a lot of parity, though, in the BC Football Conference the past few years. The VI Raiders have dominated the league, winning six straight BCFC titles. But no guarantees that the Raider Nation will run away with another season. Heading into week six, there is a log jam atop the standings. And it is nice to see this man is a big key to the West Shore Rebels' success. Quinn Van Gilswick was dialed in at West Shore Rebels practice last night as the special teams unit went through their paces. Quinn even tried one from midfield, but hit the crossbar. He can afford the odd miss in practice, though, after hitting field goals from 32 and 36 yards in Saturday's road win over the Okanagan Sun. Yes, you heard correctly, a road win versus the Okanagan Sun. That hasn't happened in 10 years. It's a huge, huge confidence builder. I mean, especially for our young guys and, you know, they weren't sure if we could beat the top teams in this league and uh, and be one of those teams, and here we are. Definitely, um, especially after last week, we know that we got something uh, something that's for real going on here. Uh, we got a lot of heart, a lot of good uh, good soul in the team, people trying to work hard, and uh, we take every week just uh, just trying to get a win. Something special is happening among this group. The win at the Apple Bowl not only has the Rebels just one point back of top place Langley and Nanaimo, it also proved to be an unexpected team building road trip. See, the Rebels bus broke down on the Coca Hall on their way to Kelowna, and the team was forced to hang out under an overpass to keep cool and shaded for three hours. When the game finally kicked off at 8 30 p.m., the West Shore Rebels a stronger unit. It was a long trip and we uh, we had a lot of stuff on our mind kind of thing but when the game uh, when, when the kickoff came we all just put it aside and, uh, we all really showed uh, that we got heart and uh, it's a team effort and we really stuck beside each other and pulled it out in the end. We're making a run this year so for all you people out there watching at home come out to the games a lot of fun bring the kids family friendly and uh, yeah and help cheer these guys on they deserve it. And you can help cheer the Rebels on Sunday at 4 o'clock when they host the Kamloops Broncos. Well, in a final push to get a new NHL collective bargaining agreement done before the Saturday deadline, the NHL and NHL Players Association each tabled a proposal. Two sides made some movement to try to bridge the gap when it comes to sharing hockey-related revenues, but they are still far apart. Commissioner Gary Bettman says the league will withdraw this latest offer if it's not accepted by the time the current labor exp agreement expires. Because with every day we're, we're experiencing and will continue to experience damage to the game and to the business of the game. And what we're trying to do now is is stem that damage. And, and so what we would be prepared to do now uh, to make a deal before there's extensive damage is not the same that we'll be prepared to do in the event we get to a point where we've suffered the damage. I would just remind everybody that a lockout is a choice. It doesn't have to be made. Um, it's up to them to make that judgment. Well, that's going to leave a lot more time for these guys to work on their golf game. Some of the Canucks lent their celebrity to a charity golf tournament today in Vancouver, including Roberto Luongo. He received all the media attention. The last interview Luongo did on the Pacific Northwest, he said he would be willing to waive his no-trade clause if the Canucks asked him to. Well, when the Canucks benched their number one guy for games three, four, and five against Los Angeles, the message was clear. Corey Schneider is Vancouver's goalie of the future. Most expected Luongo to be long gone by now. I mean, obviously, we, we all want to know what, what the future holds, I think. But, uh, you know, sometimes uh, these things take longer than others. I mean, um, I don't think it's it's the worst thing in the world. Uh, you know, like I said uh, uh, just a few seconds ago, I mean, uh, we got some great friends on the team. Uh, lots of respect for, for the organization. And I've had some great times here. So, I mean, and there's no animosity whatsoever. And, uh, uh, you know, Mike's got to do his thing. And, and uh, you know, I'm here and, and I'm enjoying my time. I don't anticipate it being unsettling unless you guys make it unsettling, and it won't be internally for us. You know, it is a story, though, and, and it's going to be pursued by the media, and at the end of the day, we're going to do what's best for Roberto and what's best for our hockey team, and we don't unfortunately control the timing of that to, for the most part, but um, we've been listening all summer to teams and, and what they're proposing, and I'm sure that we'll be moving ahead on one form or the other. 
tired of all this NHL lockout business, all the more reason to head to your local hockey rink to get your fix. The Victoria Royals play their one and only preseason home game on Saturday afternoon when they host the Vancouver Giants. Tickets are only five bucks and can be bought at the walk-up window at the Select Your Tickets box office. This is neat. Canada's top athletes are getting a new home in Burnaby. It's a $61 million sports science and medicine center. It's expected to be completed next year, and it'll be home to doctors, physiotherapists, and chiropractors, all trained to help amateur and professional athletes recover from injuries. A star-studded athletic advisory board that includes Victoria's Steve Nash and Olympian Silken Lawman has been assembled to develop programs and services. Former Vancouver Canuck Trevor Linden says it will also help young athletes train more efficiently. Where I grew up in Medicine Hat, you know, it was basically uh, you just you blindly try to do what you think is right without any direction. So to have these great minds collaborate at this facility and, and to be able to be uh, helping our young athletes. And I think sport in our province and our country is so important. It's an important weekend ahead for the VIU men's soccer team. After opening the season with two wins on the road, Bill Merriman's men will look to put on a dazzling display for the home crowd Saturday the M host the put their unblemished record on the line against the Kwantlen Eagles and on Sunday an old soccer rivalry is renewed as the Mariners face the Douglas Royals definitely our biggest rivals so probably be facing them again in the BC finals potentially at some point so this is gonna be a, a big tell of how that's gonna turn out I think our preseason games helped us a lot playing New Vic Simon Fraser schools like that so started to pay off Finding the back of the net shouldn't be a problem for this year's squad. Last weekend, seven goals were scored by seven different players. That as the M's ranked number three in the country. But if it's not number one, well, the job's not done. I, I pay attention a little bit to the rankings as they kind of switch up and down, but it all comes down to the playoffs, and that's where we tend to, to want to prove ourselves more than anything. So. It's fine for now. I think we have the players and we have the talent, but again, it all comes down to, I mean, the competition in the Pac West is just so strong. It's uh, whatever bounce you get on that day. Uh, you get a tie, you get a win, or you could lose by one point or a goal, and it's just, uh, yeah, you just got to really focus. So. They will be a, a tough contender this year. Boy, will they. And uh, the Couch and Valley Capitals host their home opener on Saturday, so we'll hear from that hockey team tomorrow. All right. My thank you. You're welcome.